a very exciting day back on The Guide. We're heading back from our project from the previous episode, The Fish Farm. And my oh my, we got our first taste of major building in that episode. Uh, we did most of it in a live stream, so if you didn't catch it, be sure to watch the live stream replay. But we're back here at the base camp, and uh, we have a little bit left to do. All right, I'm not going to call this place done. We've already talked about this. We want to put some flowers and grass and custom trees and things like that. But that's, again, not a project for today because I do want to start thinking about the rest of this area. In today's video, we are talking about how to plan a base. And the most important part of planning a base is actually figuring out a location. And we happen to have already found that ourselves. We, we scouted this place out before the season started, uh, which is why I built my base camp over here. And the rest of this land is going to be dedicated toward our base camp village. Which, by the way, I'm not even sure that I've mentioned in a video yet. The theme for our base camp village is going to be a magical village. It's going to be very much fantasy style. Uh, very, very cool stuff in mind for what that's going to be. Once you've found that location that you want to be long term, you need to kind of assess the land a little bit and make sure that it's going to be suitable for your needs. This is close, but there's a little bit of work to be done. We need to take care of the trees, the holes, and the hills in this area. And so we're going to start with the trees. We're just going to continue chopping this stuff out i spent a little bit of time on a live stream talking a lot about live streams today i hope you'll stop in and check them out but we cleared out this entire area during a live stream a little bit left to do over here before i think we can call it good so let me take care of this and then we'll talk about what's next we got some more trees removed from the area but we still have some on this outer edge toward the lake I think we're going to leave them there for now. They're not really in the way, and if they do become an issue down the road, uh, we'll move them at that point. But for now, uh, we need to work on the next phase of our planning process, and that is to flatten out some of this land. I have a camera account turned on right now on a second device so that I can see this from a bird's eye view while I'm working. And basically what we're going to be doing is going around and flattening out some of this land, especially in areas like this over here that are pretty steep. We can't really build anything thing over here uh, our goal is to try to figure out what spaces are usable and what spaces can be adapted to be usable for building paths farms different things like that essentially we want to keep enough elevation changes to make the area look and feel interesting uh, so that it's not all just one flat area but we also want to flatten out some areas so that we can put some pretty decent sized builds here granted some of our larger builds like a gold farm and an iron farm they're probably going to go up there these are going to be much more smaller sized farms and storage units and things like that it's been a few episodes since we've had a chance to do this so i thought maybe while we're digging it would be a good opportunity for a comment from one of you guys bama exploration says you guys are so creative i wish i had the vision to build and make it look nice great video well, Bama, I appreciate that feedback. Thank you so much. If you're not aware of what they were talking about, they were referring to the previous episode where Prowl and I built something very cool together. We both built our own fish farms, but then during a live stream, we actually decorated the place, made it look like a dock, added all sorts of wood varieties and staircases and different things like that. It looks very, very cool. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to go check it out. But I did want to comment back on this and say that you absolutely can come up with a creative vision. It is possible. Possible. For some people, it might come a little bit easier and more natural, but for others, it might take a little bit more work. This is why I'm kind of showing you how to do this part of the process in today's episode. I know it's not a whole lot of progress. I know it's not a farm. It's not a build. It's not a whole lot of anything other than prepping the area for what we're going to be doing throughout the season. But I don't want to skip this because this is a vital step to the creative process. This is the vision casting. We didn't have to do too much to the area with the fish farm because it was already pre-generated the way we really wanted it. All we had to do was build a structure around it. But sometimes you got to go through and uh, re-terraform the entire area like we're doing here just to make sure that it's going to fit the vision that we have. So some suggestions that I might offer to you that applies not just to this video, but to the comment as well, is that if you're looking for vision, if you're looking for inspiration, uh, go to Google. It's the best place to look for inspiration. If you go to Google, you can find different types of concept art just by searching. If you're interested in building a city, Google something like city concept art. If you're looking to build a medieval town, Google something like medieval concept art. If you're looking to build something like a pirate cove or a spaceship or whatever you're 
imagination can think of, just just go Google it. Google whatever the topic is, followed by concept art, and I guarantee you, you're going to find at least a couple of images that are going to give you some inspiration. Other places that you can get inspiration, watching other Minecraft players or content creators that do exactly what we're doing here. That's what I used to do. I don't have a ton of time anymore to watch a lot of content creators. I wish I did, uh, but I used to watch a lot of Minecraft content creators for inspiration, and that's a great way to do it as well. Another place you can find inspiration is just in your daily life. Once in a while, while I'm driving down the road, I'll look at a building and I'll say, hey, that's kind of cool. And I'll just kind of examine it. I'll look at the building or I'll look at the structure or I'll look at whatever, but I try to pinpoint what's actually intriguing or interesting about that specific thing. And then I think about what could I do in Minecraft to replicate that kind of thing? So once again, I know it might be a lot of work for some people if you're not naturally creative minded, but you can do it. You can come up with a cool creative vision for your Minecraft builds. Hey, some people just wanna throw down a dirt house and build the largest farms they can. That takes creative vision as well. Our goal with the Bedrock Guide is to show you as well-rounded of a gameplay experience as possible. That's why when we go to make farms, we don't just leave them as farms. We wanna decorate them. We wanna make them look nice because that is part of the Minecraft experience. And we definitely want to be well-rounded, even though th there's no round things in Minecraft. That's not true. A, po a potato's round. A potato is great inspiration. If you can't come up with anything good, just make a potato. Anybody can make a potato. And after a little bit of time, and by a little bit of time, I mean uh, like three or four hours. Took a while. We've got this. Absolutely love it. The, the the land looks really nice and flowy. It doesn't look like it's been modeled too much. It looks pretty natural. We've got a couple of things that we want to talk about and how to start planning the next phase. If you look at the way that this terrain is laid out, we've got a couple of different places to build. We've got this little landing area right here. We've got a landing area right here. We've got another landing area right here. And then we got some more potential landing areas over here that we haven't quite got to yet, but they are generally almost there. Then if you look at the layout of the terrain itself we've got a few natural ways to get up and down uh, from the top of the hill and the bottom of the hill as well here's what we're gonna do next I've got a chest down here with a bunch of junk in it and some wool the wool is what we're really concerned about and what we're gonna do with this red wool is we're gonna take it and we're not necessarily gonna connect it all up but we're gonna put like a dotted border all the way around the campsite kind of where I don't want any building to go so anything on the inside of this perimeter is a no-go do do not build here. This is the perimeter of the campsite. We're going to put a tree line here and fill it out, flesh it out so that uh, we've got a, a little bit segmented off from the rest of the village. I've got a lot of red wool, so uh, we're just going to spam it around really quick and fill it in as needed. And that's about good. I think we had enough wool to go the entire way around. Didn't even quite use all of it. We had three stacks of wool and we only used like just under two. So we've segmented off our campsite, so we know not to build on the inside of this area anymore. And this is where we're gonna have to use things a little bit more sparingly for now, until we get a little bit more from uh, the sheepy sheep over there. We've got some black wool, and this is going to serve as the indicator of where paths are gonna go. I'm only going to do a single wide row of paths, uh, but I do want to go back up to the top here and show you one more thing. We're just gonna be hopping back and forth in between the ground level and the bird's eye view level. I should just get my camera account in here so we can fly around, but that's okay. We'll just do this the old fashioned way. Okay, we already talked about how this terrain naturally flows upward. Uh, we're gonna take our paths and that's going to be the main road all the way up to the top, which is where my house is gonna be. We're gonna build some other things on these landings. Uh, so we'll have some like offshoot roads that go this way. Maybe we'll put a pathway this way to build some stuff out here at a later date, but that's what the black wool is gonna be for. We're just gonna make a naturally winding path all the way up that terrain. Rain. Okay, so because we have so few uh, wool, we're going to do the same thing as we did over there. At first, we're just going to build a, uh, a, a polka dotted line of black wool, and then we'll fill it in as we can. So uh, we're just going to kind of go straight up the middle here, and I might want to curve it around uh, over here a little bit and go up this section, maybe have the pathway border the edge of this little dropout so that we can leave some more room for the build itself. And maybe we can wind it back in. So now that this area is widening out a little bit, we can leave some room over on this side to build a couple of things before shifting the road back up over here. The most important 
important thing you need to keep in mind with roads is that they should not just be straight or flat. If you make a straight or flat road in your build area, it's just going to come out a little bit boring and uh, it's not going to come out very natural. So don't build flat. Don't build straight. Be as hilly and curvy as possible. And right here, I think that's where we're going to stop that. So we got a general idea of where this path is going to flow. And I think I like that. We got a little bit of the outer edge over here to walk by. And then this path curves over here and then it curves back. I think that'll be a nice scenic view once we get some buildings and some uh, some landscaping in here. Now, mind you, we are not going to do any building today. We're not going to place a single block outside of this wall. We're not going to plant, plant a single tree. None of that is happening. This is all the planning phase so that we can figure out where things are going to go and what makes the most sense. And after endless waiting for those sheep to eat all of their breakfast, we finally got some more black wool and we filled in all the areas that I think the paths are going to go. Now, keep in mind that some of these areas are going to feel a little little bit smaller once we start to actually building because the paths are going to be more than one wide throughout here they'll probably be about three wide which will take up a little bit more space but we've left ourselves enough room that we can build some small buildings here and there and save the top space up here for our big build which is going to be our house that's why I've got this blue wool right here. We're going to go through and we're going to mark out some temporary build locations. These are subject to change based on what we actually build throughout the course of this season. And we're not going to build it all at once. We're going to do it a little by little. So rather than going around and doing like a giant square like this, marking out where a house or a building is going to be, uh, we're not going to lock ourselves into that format. I know a lot of people do it that way, but I don't really want to do it that way because I don't know what the size of each of these buildings is going to be. I kind of just want to generally know where a building might go. So how we're going to mark it is we're going to go ahead and do this and we're going to do this and we've got an X marks the spot. This is to say we've got a potential building going here and we want to be careful not to park it too close to the path because we, we do want a distinct walkway up to our buildings. It doesn't have to be super long, but we also don't want it sitting right on top of the pathway. But this is generally where we're going to build our building at some point maybe we'll put one like right here and then maybe we'll put another one down here off to the side and we're just gonna keep going through this entire village putting down plots and hopefully we'll have a decent number of things to build and there you have it this is kind of what I was talking about we got all these little X marks the spots on the ground we got a giant one up here on top of the hill just to indicate hey that's Blue Jay's house that's where that's gonna go uh, but I feel like this is pretty well spread out. Everything feels even. It doesn't feel like anything is sitting right on top of another potential build. Uh, but again, this is all subject to change. If, for example, maybe right here, we build something that's a little bit bigger just because that's what we need to use the space for. Maybe we take that X out and it just becomes a single build platform right here. Uh, or maybe if like uh, we want to build something smaller right here, we can kind of shift it around and build something else over on the other side. This is all flexible space. Again, it's why I didn't build plots. It's why I just put an X on the ground to say, eh, we might put a build here. And I think that's going to set us up to be pretty successful in building our first village on this world. Yes, I say first village because we're doing something similar in a very different build style up on top of the mountain, which you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to wait a little while for, but don't worry, it's coming and it's gonna be very cool. But hey, folks, I think that's all that I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful to you in learning how to plan out your base. Let me know if there's anything else that you would add to this list of things to do. And be sure to do that in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, click the bell, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any more videos or streams just like this. Thank you so much. You're amazing.